Good morning. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about uh, the character of Christ and how we need to be careful of the ideas and the principles or just the philosophies of the world and of uh, religious organizations and just to uh, compare them to the character of Christ. I was reading this morning uh, Colossians 2.8 which says, Beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy or empty deceit, according to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world, and not according to Christ. So it's comparing uh, Christ's character to that of religious organizations, such as the Jewish nation at the time, and some of the traditions that they had. We have many Christian churches now as well, and we have Eastern religion that has come in with philosophical ideas and principles. And so um, in <clears throat> Colossians, it's comparing these and saying, you know, there is a difference. There's uh, the worldly ones, and there's ones in religious organizations that we need to be careful of. In Colossians 3, uh, verses 1 through 2, it says, If then you are raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, and not on the things of the earth. And so that gives you an idea of where our minds need to be, what, uh, what we need to consult when we make decisions, and how we need to think about the world, what motivates us. In Colossians 3.5 it says, Therefore put to death the members which are on the earth. It says fornication, uncleanness, so that's uncleanness of mind and body, Passion, so the world talks a lot about being passionate about things, but we need to uh, have a pure passion, a desire to, to do good, and not a impure passion of the flesh. Evil desire, wishing evil of somebody, uh, wishing them harm, it says covetousness, desiring of things, and um, or maybe even the position that other people have or the influence that other people have. Uh, it says that is idolatry. So that is a modern form. We may not be worship, bowing down and worshiping idols, an object, but those, uh, this covetousness can act as that. And then in Colossians 3, uh, 8 through 9, it says, but now you yourselves are to put off all these. And here's another list of things that we need to be careful of. Anger. So that's very, you know, even in, a, in the Christian life, sometimes we have some anger that we need to be careful of. Anger towards others. Wrath, which is very strong anger. Malice, you know, wishing people harm. Blasphemy. Talks about filthy language. So the words that we use, uh, we need to be careful of. Um, it says, do not lie to one another. Do not deceive one another. So we need to be careful of that. That can be easy to fall into as well. Uh, Since you have put off the old man with his deeds. So the, the worldly life, the life that we had before we, we knew what Christ was like, um, to, put, put, to continually put that off and to recognize that uh, when it's creeping back into our life, uh, to continually set that aside each morning and, and to fill our minds with the character of Christ, what He is like and what He would have us to do, the mindset, because we you know, run through, like through media especially, we run through the character of the world or religious organizations and principles they sound good at first, but we need to compare them with Christ. And then in Colossians 
3 verses 12 through 14 says, uh, Therefore, as the elect of God, God has elected us and chosen us to be part of his kingdom. It says, Holy and beloved, put on tender mercies. Tender mercies. Showing people mercy with tenderness, kindness, humility. So not per, uh, promoting yourself or saying, look at me. Um, meekness, to be meek. And um, same, you know, the same kind of idea, not uh, presenting yourself as someone great and trying to uplift yourself, but uplift Christ. Point people to Christ. And it says, um, you know, long suffering. You know, there's a we all have you know different areas in in our life that we're struggling with, and to not just focus on those in other people, um, and then to badger them about it, but to give each of us room to grow. And we may not like uh, character traits of others, but we can encourage them in a positive way and we also be just you know long suffering you know to put up with the uh, deficiencies of others um, bearing with one another it's the same kind of idea and forgive uh, forgiving one another so when we see someone else doing yelling at us or something like that it's just forgive them and not yell back to present the character of Christ and the best of our ability and to grow closer to do that, to think about what we're doing and how we're doing it. Even as Christ forgave you, so you must, so you also must do. It says, but above all these things, put on love. So we need to be careful that all these things are done in love. Uh, which is the bond of perfection. And so that's kind of the summary of all these things is uh, think about, is it a loving thing to do? And this gives us, well, what is love exactly? So this gives us an idea of what are some of the character traits of love. So I encourage you to think about these things uh, when you come across uh, people that are trying to, maybe that are very successful in life, that are trying to give you advice, um, or just, you know, you watch a video that says, oh yeah, this is the way I was able to succeed in life by having this passion towards this or putting this uh, idea into practice and to consider, is this in line with Christ? Would, would Christ do this? And a lot of times it's not. It seems very, maybe very good on the outside. Like, oh, well, I could be, you know, very financially successful by listening to this person and you know, following some of their advice, but we need to follow the advice of Christ first and compare that with what we see in the world and be discerning. So that goes back to the top here where it says, beware lest anyone cheat you, cheat you out of the character of Christ, out of developing a Christ-like character. Because Satan works very deceitfully, and he knows the things to put before us that will draw us away from the character of Christ. So we become more and more like the world, and maybe imperceptibly at first. But in the end, we will see a stark contrast between what we have become and what Christ is. And so we need to analyze, you know, what is our, the character that we're presenting and the way we are thinking about things. Is it, is it according to what Christ would have us to do? I just want to have a quick prayer with you. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you that uh, we have Christ as our example, that you have shown us what you are like. Um, be with this other person that's watching, that they would be encouraged and blessed, and uh, we would be careful about the philosophies that we find in the world and in different organ. Uh, church organizations. Thank you for giving us your word as the standard of truth, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right. God bless, and I will see you on the next video. Bye-bye.